It's time for Down Home in the Tri-States with your host, Ron Jones. If it's farming, gardening, information, or just plain interesting, you can catch it all right here on Down Home in the Tri-States. Good morning, folks. How y'all doing this morning? Glad to have you with us. I'm Ron Jones. It's Down Home in the Tri-States. We're on every Sunday morning at 530, right here on News 13 WMBB. We uh, a little technical difficulty last week, and they, they, had to, they re-ran the show from the previous week, so there's a lot of things we didn't get on. I apologize for that. We're going to try to touch on some of them today. I want to say, first of all, hello to Louise Forehand and to Mr. Bubba Wagner. He's retired FHP. Bubba knows Mr. Sorrell's son, Dennis. Dennis is retired from FHP and uh, had a real nice conversation with both of those folks and uh, they, they watch the program. We certainly do appreciate that. I want to remind you now, you can take those kids and meet Santa Claus at the Panhandle Pioneer Settlement during two festive events, Saturday, December the 7th. A jolly old St. Nick's pancake breakfast will take place at the Settlement's Clubhouse beginning at 7 a.m. Uh, adults should bring a camera so they can take pictures of their children with Santa. The pancake and sausage breakfast complete with juice and coffee is available for a donation of $5. That's pretty good for adults and $3 for children. Uh, later, the annual uh, old-fashioned Christmas celebration, holiday sights, sounds, and smells will take place at the settlement immediately following the Bluntstown Christmas Parade. As hay rides, puppet shows, storytelling, a marshmallow roast, and uh, Christmas carols, and a lot more. The gates open at 5 p.m. The entry donation is $3 for adults, $2 for ages 6 and 12, 212, and uh, free for ages under 5. Required uh, gloves and safety uh, glasses. Uh, the, the cost uh, of the class is $45. There is a $25 deposit fee required for your reservation, which goes toward the cost of the class. Give Diane Watson a call over there and talk to her at uh, 850-674-2777. That's the Panhandle Pioneer Seven in Bluntstown, Florida. Let me see what else we got. I want to see, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, some of the things we talked about last week was a frozen food sale at uh, at the Mason uh, in the Mason auction. Both of those we we were promoted those last week, but the, they just since it didn't get on, you know, we, we we missed it. So I mean, we missed telling you about it. So anyway, I hope you I hope you did remember that from previous week where we've talked about it. So uh, congratulations to Melvin and Dottie Carroll on their 50th wedding anniversary. I got a picture here somewhere right there. Yeah. November the 9th of 2013, they celebrated at 2 p.m. at the Trinity Pentecostal Church. That's on Highway 77. Uh, they renewed their vows and uh, it, it followed by a reception. The golden anniversary, 50 years with Melvin and Dottie Carroll. Mel, Dottie, I don't see how, how you put up with him that long. That man is, he's something to be desired, I tell you. But we like old Melvin. He's a good old boy. He's, he's funny, I tell you. you can't, have to be real close attention, Melvin, or you'll lose what you, you'll lose what's being talked about. You know, you have to be able to follow him. I do that pretty well, anyway. Uh, I want to mention about some up, upcoming shows that we're going to have. Eric too, y'all know Eric. Eric went on location for us to the 2013 Ag Expo in Moultrie, Georgia, and he also uh, covered the big event and parade in Graceville, Florida. So we're going to be having that coming up on. Uh, a future show. Alto Carroll was on location at the annual Destin Fishing Rodeo. He and Richard Clark and uh, O'Neill went over there for the, uh, they go over camping every year, but he covered the fishing rodeo for us. Uh, and uh, Janet attended the Survival Justin Preparedness and, um, and Homesteading Expo at the Warsaw Possum these, Palace, um, plus uh, what, more blue, good old bluegrass at uh, Roy and, and uh, Melanie Rogers' place. Uh, also, Janet uh, got some real good video during the Pioneer Day at uh, Panhandle Pioneer Settlement. So we're going to have all that on, plus a lot more. So y'all be sure to tune in each week to Down Home in the Tri-States. Tell all your friends and neighbors about it. and uh, We certainly would appreciate it. On today's show, Alto and myself travel to Webb, Alabama, uh, to the Hartsog, Hartsog Farm for a sweet show on Satsumas. Oh, Darryl, uh, uh, Dallas, he's a nice, nice guy. I'll tell you what, they got an impressive... Uh, Sends, sends home with a box of fruit too. Boy, that stuff's good. They're gonna have a big sale coming out now. It's gonna be on uh, November the 23rd. November the 23rd, uh, and uh, they're gonna open at uh, six o'clock in the morning. And he said by two o'clock they're gonna be sold out. He's got. Uh, they're picking off of 500 trees. He said they got about 800. You'll see it. Beautiful fruit. So y'all wanna get up there and get you some of that stuff? Okay. Good stuff. Boy. You, 
good, 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 good satsumas. I like them. He gave us a, a brochure too. We got, we'll have all the directions and everything on the show today. So, anyway, it must be his grandson or somebody. Anyway, let's see what else we got to talk about. Oh yeah, the uh, want to tell you, mention also about the. Uh, uh, I had it written down here somewhere. Oh, the Antique 2 show. That's going to be on the 23rd at the Panhandle Pioneer Settlement. Y'all want to get be sure and get over there and see that. A lot of people always uh, ask us when that's going to be on. So that's, uh, that's November 23rd. The Antique 2 show and sale uh, starts at 7.30 a.m. Y'all watch this, folks, and we'll be back uh, with uh, Dallas Hartzog and some Satsumas here with Alto Carroll and myself. My name is Eric Toll. I'm the captain with the Calvin, Florida Volunteer Fire Department. We'd like to invite you to join us for our third annual Thanksgiving Smoked Turkey and Boston Butt Fundraiser. It'll be on November 23rd, 2013. It'll be right here on US 231. Uh, we'll have some of the best smoked turkeys and smoked Boston butts you've ever had. It's going for a great cause, helping to support our fire department here in Calmelton. Um, it's our largest fundraiser, and it is a Saturday just before Thanksgiving, so remember that when it comes time to prep that meal. Come join us here on the 23rd of November here in Camelton, and we certainly would appreciate you coming to see us and, and look forward to meeting you. Uh-oh, my well pump quit working. What? You mean I gotta wait a week for parts? I can't go a week without water, folks. How many times have you heard that? Don't put yourself through misery when your well pump stops working. Call the Man Water Dan. Dan can get you up and going the day you call him. Unlike most well pump repairmen, Water Dan stocks and carries on his pump truck the parts you need to repair your pump. It may just be a simple adjustment. It doesn't matter whether it's a home, school, farm irrigation pump, business, livestock, pool. Water Dan can give you an honest opinion and do you an honest job. I use Water Dan anytime I have a problem because I know I can trust Water Dan, and I will have water today. Put this number on your fridge and call the man Water Dan, 850-535-9308, 535-9308. Call the man Water Dan. Water Dan is the customer's man. Main Street Market in Chipley is this area's headquarters for top quality livestock and pet feed. Paul Davidson at Main Street Market carries only the best and most precious feed you'll find anywhere in the Tri-States area. Cattle feed, dog feed, horse feed, rabbit feed, goat feed, chicken feed. From top quality Seminole, the preferred feed for show animals, to FRM, Tucker and more. To roll hay and belt hay, Main Street Market on the corner of Highway 90 and 77 in Chipley, Florida has it all. Main Street Market is also your fresh and frozen vegetable and fruit outfit. Plus, deer court and pine straw. Main Street Market, double Ron sent you. Be one of the first in this area to experience the pleasure and great fun aboard your new stylish Sun Chaser. Sun Chaser has come south to Joe's Motor Service in Hartford, Alabama. Powered by Suzuki or Honda Outboards, Sun Chaser will be a new and popular addition to your lifestyle. From the change room to live well to abundant storage and comfort, your Sun Chaser will be a big hit with your family, friends, and fishing partners. Ramp up the fun in your life. See the selection and sizes only at Joe's Motor Service, Hartford, Alabama. Now tell me what you think. What in the bag? You got a bag? <laughs> we do. We got some boxes I'm going to send back by. <laughs> Folks, this is Dallas Hartzog. We're not standing in, in Orlando or uh, South Florida, anywhere like, like it. Tell them where we're at, Mr. We're Hartzog. actually in southeast Alabama, by five miles east of Dothan. And what you're seeing is a Satsuma. Grove. You see that, Alta? Yes. Pretty in it. I, I I was uh, mesmerized when we drove up here and looked at this. How many trees you got here? We're picking off of about 500 this year, Ron. We got a total of about 800. One thing I would say is a lot of our audience, a lot of your audience, can remember when we had a Satsuma built throughout this region. We're not introducing a new crop. We're just bringing back an old crop. So they used to grow here before? They're in great abundance from all the way from the east part of Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, even to the edge of Georgia line, northwest Florida. I have stories and pictures of car loads of this fruit going out of this area, going to the northern markets. And what happened, they came in in the late 1800s, 
and they flourished for about 50 years. And then starting in the 30s and 40s up to about 1952, uh, hard cold freezes began to take its toll on the orchards. So most of, in fact, all of them except the isolated trees disappeared. And uh, Auburn University did some research starting in 1990 to bring them back. And we are able to do that because we have some, uh, we use water as a heat source. And uh, this is our 11th year in production and we've been fairly lucky. So you've, you've not really experienced in the 11 years you've been doing this, a total major loss of everything. That's correct. We, we think that we can get by uh, down to about 23 degrees. Uh, some years we've had a 17 or 18 and done pretty well. This past year, uh, it never got below 27 degrees by our measurements here. Uh, we have a water source dedicated to each tree. And as strange as it may seem, if you freeze water, you generate heat. For every pint of water, you generate 142 BTUs of oh, wait heat. Wait a minute, let me, let me, I want you to say that again. Strange, now. isn't it? Yeah, it is, say that again now. When you freeze water, you generate heat. If you freeze a pint of water, it gives off 142 BTUs of heat energy. So if you position that water at the base of the tree, when it freezes, it brings the heat up through the plant and protects the plant. And it has done it so far. That's amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. A, a rather unusual bit of chemistry, but it works pretty well. We have misters and nozzles on every tree at the base of the tree or very near the base right. of the tree. When that water is projected on the base of the tree and it goes down cold enough that it freezes, it generates enough heat to raise the temperature a few degrees. And that few degrees is all we need to protect that tree. So this this is the uh, first part of November. Today. Actually, the day we're taping this is November the 10th. Uh, is This is about what time do they start uh, coming in for, so they're pickable for a run? In, a, in our region, uh, we kind of have an edge on some other people because it gets cooler here quicker than it does, say, in Panama City or in Mobile. Mm -hmm. So we've, had, we've already had some uh, uh, low 40s, maybe even a high 30. And the color that you see here is regulated by temperature. Also, the sweetness of the fruit is regulated by how the weather does. And that's certainly sweet enough to eat, isn't mm. it? Not sour at all. <laughs> so, so what we are able to do, we're going to have our farm sale on November the 23rd. Uh, I was going to ask you, how do you eat all these things? Well, we don't eat them okay. all. <laughs> We've learned a lot. We, we don't try to eat them all, but we have a, a very loyal customer base, which includes your cameraman today. And uh, they come get them. We have a one-day sale. Uh, it kind of looks like a college football game turning out in the morning. We open the gates at 6. And we generally are sold out by 2.30 or 3. Sure enough. And it's not uncommon to sell 700 to 1,000 20-pound boxes during that period of time. You're kidding me. We have them all harvested. We have them on trailers. Uh, we have people who have put them in your vehicle. So your time spent waiting in line is almost nothing. If you want to get out of your vehicle and come look through the orchard, we'll, we'll allow that. And we encourage that. And uh, so far, uh, we've, we've had a very good luck doing that. Our, our customers are loyal. They come back year after year after year. My wife wanted me to ask you a few questions. We got a couple Feel of free to do so. trees mm -hmm. that, uh, that we bought, and uh, she wants to know several things, and which is good for the audience, too, because I'm sure there's some people out there that, that, that probably ain't got nothing like this, you know, <laughs> pardon my English, but... What, what do you, first of all, fertilizer was, what, how do you, what do you fertilize? It's an old family secret, Ron. You, I can't tell you. Oh, I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Actually, we don't do anything <laughs> exotic. We use ordinary triple 13. We try to be very careful when we put it around the tree. Potassium chloride is potash fertilizer. Sodium chloride is table salt. You know that you can take table salt and kill a tree pretty easy. Mm -hmm. You can also kill it with potassium chloride. So move the fertilizer out away from the drip line and put it in a band. We fertilize on Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, and Father's Day, or that week. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, and Father's Day. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. Honey, you, you, you remember that now. Feel free to call me back. I'll give you my number. <laughs> we, uh, 
we are careful, and we have had some experience where we actually kill trees. We're careful to get it out away from the drip line. We put a pound of fertilizer per year of tree age, but we divide it in those three application dates. So if we had a one-year-old tree, we'd put a third of a pound, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, and Father's Day. And uh, that has worked good for us. We have started adding a few uh, minor elements, but I have a uh, long history. I've worked for over 41 years, wow. and we uh, want to be careful with minor elements. Uh, we put sulfur in the fertilizer and we've started putting a little bit of zinc. We don't want to get too much. But uh, as the years go by, we can see that the plant is taking a lot out of the soil and we have to put something back. When do you, do you ever prune your trees? And, and that is a very good question. And the answer is, if you look at those trees, you'll see that they kind of drape like a skirt right. to the ground. We have come out here on in the dead of winter when it's 22, 21 degrees and with a remote thermometer measure the temperature under the canopy and it's always three or four degrees warmer than it out, is out here where you and I stand it. So that heat's important. So we, we leave that tree in a natural state and, it, and every year when I go to harvest it is very tempting to come back in the dead of winter and prune some because you can tell there are fruit lying on the ground. Mm -hmm. However, about four weeks or five, five weeks ahead of our sale, we have some people that come in and pick the fruit off the ground. Pick anything off the tree that's not acceptable in the marketplace and uh, get those away. By the time we get to the grading process to put the fruit in the boxes, uh, we've pretty much taken the unacceptable fruit out of the orchard. My wife and I spent the night out here the night before the sale. And uh, here before last, the first car got to the front gate at a quarter till five. And we had advertised then that we were open at seven. We went down and opened the gate at six and the roads were blocked in both directions. Our customers last year, the last lady walked out with the last box. It don't happen all the time. But she said that she told me, she said, I'll be back earlier next year. We have a highly educated family here, a bunch of educated rednecks, but every one of them is involved in this. They bring to the table different expertise. We have a daughter-in-law who has a master's degree level in nutrition. She won't let me. I don't want to, but we don't put anything in the orchard we wouldn't put in our mouth. So if, if a baby gets hold of this fruit and peels it, he'll be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very self-conscious. We practice a, a program of, of integrated pest management we first identify the press before we spray for it, and then we pick a user-friendly, environmental-friendly material. For example, we have a little scale insect. We use a oil-based material that has the consistency of olive oil spray out there. It stops up the bugs, breathing apparatus. It's as good as anything. And it goes right on the on It goes the spray. We spray them with a big pecan sprayer. It's very effective. So we we're. Uh, we pay close attention to what's in this orchard, and uh, it's obvious you do. But I don't see, I haven't seen a bad leaf since I've been. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> we, since I've been standing there, we uh, we each tree, as I said a while ago, has its own water source. These yeah. are two pumps here, and uh, if it gets down, if it's forecast, if we listen to you and you say the weather tonight's going to be 23, before it starts to freeze, say when it's 38 to 40, we'll come out in this time of the day and we'll turn the water on. Well, if it gets down low that night and then the following night you say it's going to be cold again, we'll simply leave the water on because as many water lines as we have, all we have to do is have one of them to freeze and then we've messed up a section of our orchard. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had very good luck with it. And I, I hear people, half of the people that I listen to tell me it's going to be an extremely cold winter and the other half says it's going to be like last year. Uh, who knows? <laughs> we'll, we'll wait for it to get here. <laughs> you, you, you'll know tomorrow that's what correct. the weather's going to be like. That's correct. Well, that's, uh, I'm, I'm sure you all are interested in where you're going to come to get these things. Well, let's tell them where it is. All right. If, if, you, if you know Dothan, you know there's a traffic circle all the way around the city. If you take uh, 52 East, which is advertised as the Columbia Highway or toward Webb on 52 East. It's the first street north of the medical center on the traffic circle. If you come out to Webb 
and turn left between the two stores. There's two service stations there. Go to the second stoplight, turn left. So we, we go to Webb on 52, turn on the Webb to Kensey Road, which is turning left, go to the second stop sign, and take a left. Uh, many of our customers have already been here. Right. A few haven't. But uh, we will be advertising a little bit in the next couple of weeks, and uh, I certainly appreciate you and Alto coming today. Uh, this is truly a family operation. All of the family, uh, we have uh, three in-laws, three children, wife, four grandchildren. They'll all be out here working that day. Uh, how often is it you get to... You get the man that owns a place stand here and talk to you about it, you know. I mean, uh, I got a, I got a question. Ron. Please. Yeah. Uh, why, why do you uh, use cutters to to harvest them and instead of just pulling them off the tree? If you pull this off, Mr. Alto, you'll pull the entire neck out of it. Each fruit has to be clipped with these clippers that we have here, and uh, you have to clip it short like this because if you don't, this stem will punch a hole in the next fruit and make it unedible after a few days. Sure enough. So we clip every fruit. These are grape clippers. We'll mm -hmm. clip every fruit. Now I got a question for you, Mr. Alto. Okay. If there is a 200 pound of fruit on this tree behind me, takes three pounds to make a, three fruit to make a pound, that's three times two, that's 600 fruit. Each one of them's got to be clipped and we've got 600 trees. How many clippings is that? You want to take a break out? Hey. <laughs> be a good uh, guy, wouldn't it? Let, 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 me like, uh, let me do like these youngins do today. Uh, get, I have to find my calculator. Get, cap, <laughs> get your machine. <laughs> what I want to point out was that there's a lot of a labor involved in clipping all of this. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we've, had, we've had very loyal people who come in and clip for us. And uh, we take them, when they get ripe, we take them right off the tree. And a couple of days later, they're in your hands, and that's what we do. I found out uh, first time I come up here, it's not your place is not hard to find. If you come er, uh, like eight o'clock in the morning, just follow the peelings. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that story before, Mr. Alto, and there is some truth in it. There is. <laughs> Y'all stay with us, folks. There ain't no better way to wake up to breakfast in the morning than there is to Registers Meat Products. They got your regular smoked sausage, and they got your hot smoked sausage. I like that one. And they got your center cut cured bacon. Man, that's my favorite. I love this stuff. And they got your smoked pork chops. Folks, you can get your Registers Meat at over 140 grocery outlets throughout the area. If they don't have it, tell them they need to get it. It's Registers. Tell them you want it, you demand it. And if you're in Cottondale, Florida, check out their store over there and get that Pick 5 for $19.99. Just like old Andy always said, it's good. <laughs> You want quality, craftsmanship, the best portable building you can get, you need to come to Atlas Portable Buildings and Garages. It's all built right here on site in Panama City, folks. Y'all come do business with them. State inspected and approved. Stop paying for somebody else's building. At Atlas, you can rent to own. Choose from a big selection or have it built to your need. Top grade, two by four studs, pressure treated floor joists. Need a strong, well-built garage? We can build them too. At last. Atlas Portable Buildings and Garages you can trust. It's the best product you're going to find when it comes to portable buildings and garages. Come see Dwayne Phillips. Atlas Portable Buildings and Garages on Highway 231 across from Gulf Asphalt. Get something started, like a brand new Kubota utility vehicle during Kubota's Too Great to Wait power sale. Kubota RTVs give you ultra durability, diesel strength, and value. Right now, get zero down and 0% APR financing for up to 60 months on Kubota utility vehicles like the climate-controlled RTV 1100 or four-passenger RTV 1140 during Kubota's Too Great to Wait power sale. See and save on all Kubota tractors and equipment at Soul Tractor today. Wow, this snow sure is gritty and salty. No, silly, this is sand, not snow. So that's why it's so hot. Yeah, but thank goodness our daddy owns A-plus air conditioning.
conditioning, he keeps our home as cold as Alaska. Cool. Hey, I'll race you home. For the most professional, most reliable, and most preferred air conditioning service in the area, call A-Plus Air Conditioning, 850-230-3009. Okay, bet you I can win. Ron, what we're doing here is this is the fruit of a trifolded orange tree. The trifolded orange is here on our left, and you can tell that it's characterized by a whole lot of thorny bushes and briars and thorns on it. And the reason we keep this tree is it provides us with, with seed. These seed are planted in the ground. When they germinate and the little plant gets about two feet tall, uh, nursery people who graft these take buds from satsuma trees. They insert under the bark of this new little tree. And when that bud starts to grow, they clip off the old part and the satsuma tree grows on top of this trifolded orange rootstock. You harvest this limb in, uh, when it's cold in the wintertime, like in February. Yeah. And you put it in a plastic bag and put it in a refrigerator. When the bark on these little young trifolded orange trees start slipping, you got this in a dormant state because it's in the refrigerator. You, you, you harvest, that is a, a little bud right there at the tip of my knife blade. You yeah. harvest that bud, you clip this, this leaf off, and you take a little piece of that off, and you slip it in that trifolded orange bark so that the cambium layer is touching the cambium layer over there. Huh. That just means outer bark. Yes. And then when this little bud starts to swell and grow, you clip it off. You clip the old plant that you had off, and this will... Come that on. would sprout out. That yeah. sprout out and be your yeah. new satsuma tree. Huh. And that, that sounds real simple, but I have talked to a lot of people who can <laughs> graft apples and pears and other things that they don't graft citrus. They'd die on me too, probably. This, these trees are funny, Ron. They kind of know how much fruit they can carry to harvest. And then after they bloom uh, in late April and early May, they'll drop all the fruit that they cannot carry to harvest. Exactly. They'll just drop them on the ground. Why do you whisper green grass? Why tell the trees what ain't so? Whispering grass, the trees don't have to know. No, no. Why tell them all your secrets? Who kissed there long ago? Come on down now to the Otis Bowie Road. Whispering Otis Bowie Road. You're going to be turning left on Otis Bowie Road. That's right here at the Mount Arat Baptist Church. Just like this red Subaru is doing right here. You'll be turning Don't left. You tell it to the trees. They will like the red Subaru is doing. And everyone That's will alto. know. We just, we got you to told the blabbering trees. That's Otis Bowie Road. Yes, you told them. Turn it that church right there. Once before, it's no secret anymore.